I'm Daphne Richards and this is Augie, CTG's doggy horticulturist. Our question this week is about fire ants and other insects in the compost pile. If you're an active composter, you'll have definitely have insect larvae in your pile. And that's a good thing. These creatures are helping the microbes to break down the food waste in your pile and turn it into rich compost. Large, off-white grubs are very commonly found in compost piles, and people often mistake them for the same grub that damages our lawns. But the grubs in your pile are from a different species of insect, not the June beetle larvae that eat the roots of your turf grass and other plants. You might also find black soldier fly larvae in your compost pile, which are also good. The insect species that are attracted to lay eggs in your pile will be influenced by what you put in it. If you have more kitchen scraps and food waste, you'll likely have more insect larvae. If you're only composting yard waste, you may not see as many creepy crawlies. But fire ants are another matter. Fire ants are actually building their mounds in the nice, soft, organic matter of your compost pile. Although they're doing some aeration and technically aren't hurting anything in the pile, you most likely still don't want them living there, since they'll see the pile as theirs, not yours. If you have a mound of fire ants in your pile, it indicates that you need to turn and moisten the pile more often. If you're regularly turning the pile, the ants will have no time to build a home. In the awful summer of 2011, I didn't turn my pile as much as I should have, and I came out one day to discover that a very large colony of fire ants had moved in. I got stung a few times when turning it, and it took a few turns to get the ants to move away, but they eventually did. So there's no need to use any chemical fire ant treatments in this situation. Our pick of the week is Cesalpinia. There are two very common species of Cesalpinia in the nursery trade, Pulcherima and Gillesii, and both are quite beautiful. Cesalpinia pulcherima is most commonly known as Pride of Barbados, or Red Bird of Paradise. It has orange-yellow flowers and is a little bushier than Cesalpinia gillesii, which is most commonly known as Yellow Bird of Paradise because it has all yellow flowers. Both plants love the heat, need full sun, and prefer very well-drained soil. These plants will bloom all summer long with very little supplemental irrigation, so be careful not to overwater them. Both plants may freeze to the ground in winter, but not always. The yellow bird of paradise in Kathleen's featured garden hasn't frozen to the ground in years, so she doesn't cut it back. Connie Lawson also sent pictures of hers that put on an amazing display all summer long. If you notice leaves re-emerging on the plant in the spring, the plant was not damaged by the cold and may be left alone. But as temperatures warm up, if you notice growth at the base of the plant from the roots and not from the branches, go ahead and prune off all the top growth and allow the plant to re-emerge from the roots. Pride of Barbados, the orange flowered one, is more frost tender and does freeze to the ground in our winters more often than not. Both plants can get up to about eight feet tall, but Pride of Barbados is generally a little shorter and bushier, mostly due to the fact that it freezes to the ground most years and both plants get about four to six feet wide, so give them plenty of room. Both plants also attract hummingbirds, butterflies, and are considered to be deer resistant. Another pick of the week comes from Susan Brock, who found cardinals nesting in her knockout roses. Her diverse organic garden is a certified National Wildlife Federation backyard habitat where lots of wildlife make their home. Thanks for sharing this wonderful photo, Susan. To do this week, it's probably time to do a little garden cleanup. Those free spring flowering plants have now gone to seed or have spent blooms, and removing them will help spruce up the garden and encourage a bit of rejuvenation. We'd love to hear from you, so please check out klru.org ctg to send us your questions and plants of the week from your garden. Mm -hmm.